FLM, wide open thinking, world-class work, and far-reaching results. Now with locations in Minneapolis, Columbus, Indianapolis, and Washington, D.C. A strategic marketing and communications company dedicated to serving clients who specialize in the business of agriculture and the life of rural communities. Thank you for joining us for our AgriPulse Washington Week interview. I'm Spencer Chase, joined as always by AgriPulse Senior Writer Phil Brasher, discussing the week that was agriculturally speaking in Washington, D.C. And the big story this week uh, involves the Congress and the House of Representatives, not necessarily some floor action or committee action by any means, but more so a decision by Agriculture Secretary Tom Vilsack that he does not have the legal authority under the current governing farm bill to uh, authorize cottonseed as an other oil seed for programs like ARC and PLC under the farm bill. Phil, this is something that uh, ag legislators, particularly uh, House Agriculture Committee Chair Mike Conway, have kind of been pushing on him for, for right. a while. Right. Finally got an action on it this week. In the grand scheme of this whole situation, I don't think, and you don't think either, that we're done with this, but what does this all mean? Right, well this, Spencer, this is a huge issue back in my home country and in, uh, in West Texas right. and across the South, where cotton prices have really tanked globally because of, um, uh, actions that uh, China in particular have taken in terms of manipulating uh, supplies and growers they gave up the they gave up uh, the uh, direct payments that uh, they and other farmers used to have in uh, in exchange for some revenue assurance that, which is just not helping them out in the way they would like they uh, came uh, to Congress with uh, the chairman of uh, the House Ag Committee uh, Mike Conaway and to uh, USDA asking for um, this assistance to uh, that, that would go to cottonseed oil under under the farm bill, and as you said, uh, Secretary Vilsack yesterday notified uh, them, uh, notified the Hill that uh, he didn't believe he could do it. Uh, he didn't have the authority under the farm bill. They would have to act. So this is really going to be an interesting situation going forward because cotton prices aren't going to magnificently turn around to where this assistance is no longer requested by the cotton industry. So they're probably going to keep on it. So I mean, what legislatively, what can be done in this in this scenario? Well, actually, they seem to be a bit of a stalemate right now because what Vilsack said was you either got to uh, tweak the farm bill in order to uh, uh, cover cottonseed oil, or he also brought up something else uh, back in 2010, uh, when or after 2010, when uh, Secretary Vilsack provided some emergency assistance to growers in the South as uh, Democrats were in uh, some tight, uh, tight races, particularly Blanche Lincoln in, in Arkansas. After that, the Republicans uh, uh, in Congress said, no, you can't do that anymore, and they put some restrictions on how he could uh, spend money under what's called a commodity credit corporation. Um, and now Vilsack is coming to them, uh, coming back to uh, Congress and saying, well, one of the things you could do is lift those restrictions that you put on me and I could, uh, I could do something to help cotton. Um, but right now the, uh, the ball seems to be back in the court of uh, House Agriculture Committee and Mike Conaway. Uh, uh, He's got to figure out something either to uh, find a new source of pressure on Secretary Vilsack to get him to change his mind or else um, do something uh, legislatively. So this will certainly be an interesting situation to follow. There's been a lot of cotton guys that have been calling this for this to happen for, for quite a long time. So it'll be interesting to see how this all works out. And interestingly right. enough, House Agriculture Committee Chair Mike Conaway is scheduled to talk to the National Cotton Council on Saturday in Texas. So uh, it'll be an interesting conversation that the chairman is going to have to have at that uh, at that meeting. So uh, we'll be sure right. to keep you up to date on all of the latest developments on this uh, on this cotton oil seed situation. Over on the other side of the hill in the uh, Senate chamber, some action taken uh, on a Senate energy bill, a uh, vote taken on cloture today. I say today we're recording this on a Thursday. And uh, that cloture vote failed. So uh, Democrats, Republicans, whoever is against this bill mm -hmm. could come to the chamber and filibuster against it. Um, it sounds like a lot of the issues with this cloture vote had to do with a water crisis going on right now in Flint, Michigan? That's really the only thing holding it up right now. The senators from Michigan want a $600 million package of aid uh, for Flint. And uh, the Republicans say, well, it's too much, too soon. Um, we need to go through the regular appropriations process for, for that. But they also want to move this bill. Uh, it would be the first major 
energy legislation to come out of Congress since 2007. It's got a lot that both Republicans and Democrats want. Um, the Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell said after after the vote uh, failed, uh, which stalls the uh, stalls the bill, that the discussions would continue over the weekend between uh, Republicans and Democrats, and they would try to, as he put it, salvage the bill uh, next week. So uh, stay tuned. Yeah, that bill is still very much alive. It's just uh, experiencing a bit of a delay right now. Uh, we'll, we'll let you know how long that delay is going to last. Uh, I want to wrap up this week uh, talking about some uh, budgetary action that's going to be taken by the White House uh, next week. They're going to be releasing their fiscal year 2017 mm -hmm. budget. And uh, Phil saw a little bit of a sneak peek uh, with that in regards to some ag research funding uh, that's going to be provided by the White House. Right. They, uh, they've been rolling out some of their uh, big budget uh, ideas, new budget ideas. Uh, last week it was uh, child nutrition in terms of summer feeding that they want to dramatically expand. This week uh, they uh, uh, propose to double the amount of research funding that goes through universities and uh, other institutions, ag uh, agricultural research, um, something that's uh, fairly broadly supported. But that, and that'll be part of the budget that they uh, propose on Tuesday. And that's also important because that will uh, we'll start seeing the appropriations process for fiscal 2017 uh, start to um, uh, get going. And because they would like to get some of the uh, first bills on the floor in April um, uh, to debate. There's been a lot of talk about uh, returning to regular order, specifically in regards to the appropriations process. A lot, you know, a lot of talk, but this is an election year. It's going to be something that's very difficult to achieve. They have a achieve. very, very short schedule uh, because they have the conventions uh, in July, and then we're going to get completely tied up in the campaigns. Uh, they would like to get some of these bills. Uh, it's 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 a practically impossible for them to get uh, bills agreed to and uh, to the president uh, uh, to this year, but they would like to get them through, get, to, get their amendments, get their policy writers on there, and, uh, um, and that has some uh, political uh, benefit as, as well. So. Yeah, because between mid-July and Election Day in November, they really aren't in town all that often. Not much is going to happen around And here. keep in mind, the fiscal year ends before that anyways. So who knows, uh, who knows how the appropriations process right. is going to work out this year. But uh, it'll, it'll be interesting to follow, and uh, that'll really all get going next week. I think that's going to about do it uh, from this week's uh, AgriPulse Washington Week in Review. We certainly appreciate you following and, uh, and watching. Uh, we'll be sure to keep you up to date uh, next week with all the latest in ag policy news and information. For Phil Brasher, I'm Spencer Chase. Have a good one.